Before my accident, I think life was much different than it is now. Um, I wouldn't say I was a different person, but I definitely had different you know, perspectives. I definitely had different values, and more than anything, I think I definitely had a different appreciation than I do now. Well, I've always thought that my life immediately before the accident was, uh, it was great. It was almost too perfect. Oh, my life was pretty amazing. Um, I've had an adventurous life since a very small child. My name is Jonathan Williams and I'm in first grade. My life before my accident was pretty, you know, normal. I was 20 years old when I got in my car accident. I'd fallen 50 feet straight down. I went in front of the glider, I stalled the glider, went in front of the glider and went straight down. I had three bleeds in my head. I had a collapsed lung. <clears throat> I had this arm was shattered. I have, a, I have a prosthetic elbow. I had a plate in this arm. I still have screws in this wrist. Um, I had fractured my pelvis in three places. L2 to T10 was completely blown away. Burst L1 was the diagnosis, but the whole spine was gone. I got hurt in Glamis on March 18, 2011. I was uh, in a sand buggy accident out at Dumont Dunes. That's up there near Baker on your way to Vegas. Uh, I was driving home from Vegas and I fell asleep while driving and crashed in the desert and I am now a C5-6-7 spinal cord injury. I got injured on July 26, 2007. It was about a month and a half after I'd graduated high school and, you know, for eight days in ICU and 63 days in rehab hospital, I had many reality checks of who I was as an individual. Would I make it through this? Could I handle this? Um, and all those questions were answered pretty quickly. You know, when you're first injured, you realize that your, your life will never be the same again. Uh, the morning of August uh, 8, 2007, I was on my way to work and I was sleeping in the back seat of my truck and one of the guys on my crew was driving and he we, we were all pretty much uh, strapped for sleep. I remember being in the ambulance and them asking me, can you feel this? Can you feel this? And uh, I had always thought that was a stupid question because yeah, I can feel it, but this time I couldn't feel anything. Even after the two months in intensive care, I still really didn't know that I was paralyzed because nobody really had come out to tell me you know, and who would want to give that news? 
The first thing I remember was waking up about 10 hours later in the hospital and them explaining to me um, that I was paralyzed and would probably never walk again um, and just trying to explain to me what my life was going to be like and what my injuries were and all I could think of, okay, what's next? What, what about my daughter? What's next? What do I have to do to, to live to take care of my daughter at home? Um, I had a six-year-old and a one-year-old daughter and I had another daughter on the way. My biggest thing was is, am I going to be able to be a dad to my kid? You know, I wanted to be the best father possible. I wanted to show my son that he could do this and do that, like all the things that his dad did. How am I going to be that man for my son and show him the rights and the ropes and everything on how to live? It's very frustrating to be a mom in a wheelchair, um, but it's also um, empowering, I guess. I want a family of my own someday, and it kind of holds its weight and its bearing upon me because it scares me to no end to think that I, I might not be able to be that dad I want to be. Something that I've tried to just tell people is that I'm still me, and I might not be able to give you the things physically in life that other people can, but I can give you my heart. After my accident, I realized what was real. My wife, my family, my friends, everything else is just stuff. You know, uh, my wife and I were told that we should immediately hire a caregiver because our marriage is gonna be destroyed by this. One nurse even said, suggested that they put me in a convalescent home because it was gonna be too much for my wife to handle. Anybody, anybody who's sitting in a intensive care or rehab right now, wondering about how their relationships with their wife and their kids is gonna be from now on, man, uh, it's gonna be okay. My wife and the trooper that she is, <clears throat> I would not be where I am if it was not for her. The first two years of my life were extremely hard. I had to learn how to do everything again. During that type of accident or if anybody's ever gone through a, a severe accident where you're in a hospital for a, a certain amount of time, you actually do really see who your friends are. The thing that made me proudest was to know that I was able to take care of my wife and my daughters. And um, that made me really proud. And now they got to take care of me. A virus that he had had like eight days before when him and his sister were sick, just a common virus, um, had somehow attacked his spinal cord. Um, and it was all just the swelling had made it so that he was paralyzed from the neck down. Within a matter of minutes, everything just turned sideways. And um, our whole world came upside down. And it was, you know, all of ours. It wasn't just me. It was my daughters and my wife. What kind of husband am I going to be now to my wife? What kind of father am I going to be to my girls? Is my new baby even going to know I'm her dad? I can't hold her or play with her. How could you not feel like uh, less of a, a husband or father or man? I appreciate every single moment for what it is. Every single breath that I take, I realize it's, it's another step forward. In the future, I would really, really love to walk again. I. I mean, but if it doesn't happen, I just pray for independence. I, I'm not ready to quit. I still want to do things, and I want to get stronger, and I want to get better. Miracles happen every day. I think it was really hard on my twin for her to see basically herself laying in a bed motionless and going through pain. Almost losing someone, it makes you realize that how valuable life is and how valuable the, the people you love are to you. You know, when you, ask, when you ask your God for strength, does He give you the strength or does He give you the opportunity to be strong? I definitely say that what I've learned about myself is that I'm definitely a fighter. I don't think I've ever been more driven to get what I want in life than I am now. I spent nine days in the ICU 
And then I was transported down to Casa Colina where I spent another um, five months. It was hard, you know, it was, it was hard to see, you know, your child not be able to feed themselves when they, you know, obviously could do that before. For me, you know, in the beginning it was the small victories, it was scratching my nose myself or operating a TV remote um, and then it was you know being able to hug my wife and hug my daughters you know to to hold my new baby girl man and um, the day that I was able to do that you know it took a year about a year and a half for me to be able to do that and the day that I was able to do that man um, you know, there's no way to put into words how much that meant. You know, and the last thing I was thinking about that day was walking. You know, I don't care. You can have my legs, man. This is priceless. You know, and, and it, it, that was one of the most healing experiences um, in my entire life. Feeding yourself for the first time again, or transferring yourself on and off of bed again, or giving yourself your own shower or brushing your own teeth. It's those little things that get you back just to being yourself again. Oh, I don't talk about this often. It makes me sad. Everything about my life has changed. From my friends, my goals, my career path, everything has changed. It's been a big turn. There's nowhere to go but up. You know, in the beginning, the, the, um, the things that run through your head are about all the things that you're not going to be able to do now. You know, our biggest fear in life is what is going to happen next. How will you react? Will you give in? Will you break down? Or will you get up and you keep pushing forward? I don't know what's going to happen next, but I can tell you one thing. It's, I'm not going to stop. I will, I will keep going. And no matter how many times you push me down, I'll get right back up and I, I won't give in. My whole perspective on life in general and spirituality has been completely changed. You know, um, I've heard it said that religion is for people who don't want to go to hell and spirituality is for people who've already been there. My advice is to a newly injured spinal cord injury would to be to not be afraid because fear will hold you back. Don't be afraid to fall out of your chair or make mistakes. It's, you're going to learn from them. Fear will definitely hold you back. You can do anything anybody else can do. You may be able to do it a little slower, but you're going to do it. I had to recalibrate my thinking um, and uh, being dependent on others for everything, man. When only days before I was doing it all myself, I felt my wife at my leg and she was at her wit's end and just uh, crying and begging me please try you know don't you promised me you'd never leave me as horrible as it was I think in a way it was a gift to me and it sort of restored my faith in humanity you know when I was forced to pay attention and forced to listen and like I said there's nothing short of an event like this that would have caught my attention and sure as hell did you know never once has he asked, you know, why me or um, why did this happen to me? I've felt selfish because I've required so much of the spotlight to be on me. If you don't have hope, you don't have anything. I would love to see myself married someday. I'm a helpless romantic and I mean, I write a relationship and dating blog for Colors Wheelchair. So, I mean, I have to see myself like being all lovey, right? Like. <laughs> I have a whole new set of friends and I I do go out and I you know like just dance. 
I just love dancing. <laughs> Even if it's in my chair, I just love dancing. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't know that is that I would just love to just be a teacher and just run the ASB department and just get back into coaching. I knew at 19 years old what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a fireman. Rescuing people was very important to me. So I've been by a couple accidents where I bawled my eyes out because I can't jump out of the car and go help them. But there's other things I can do now. I can get involved with people that are newly injured and I can, I can answer their questions and I can give them inspiration. I knew I would get better. There's no doubt about it. And my mindset was so strong. I just, I knew I was going to conquer this. And I, I knew it. You know, once I got exposed back to church and just kind of understanding, you know, all the different aspects of God and Jesus and the Bible, I realized so much more about me and what was going on with me. You know, all those what if questions and those why me questions were finally answered. His sister has a hike on Sunday with his Girl Scouts and he's gonna go. And I'm like, well, how are you gonna do that? You know, you're gonna walk with your crutches? And he's like, sure, why not? You know, and that's the attitude that, that I know that everything is gonna be okay. I have this no, new power. Like, I just feel unstoppable. My first year was extremely expensive and it just totally was eating away at our savings. And he said, Tom, he says, I've started this foundation, the Be Perfect Foundation. He says, why don't you send me the letter to me and we'll see if we can help you. Well, I wrote him a letter and I, in the letter I said, hey look, I've been pretty independent my whole life, helping people my whole life, but now I need some help. Thanks to the Be Perfect Foundation and Project Walk and the Claremont Club, I see myself walking someday. I don't know when. I don't even want to put a timeline on that, but someday. They've helped us in more ways than we ever could have imagined. Be Perfect Foundation has done so much for me, not only like financially with getting me started at Project Walk, but emotionally. They've really empowered me to keep going. I started Googling how and the Be Perfect Foundation. And, you know, I started reading his story and what he's doing, and I'm like, you know what? My God, it really just hit me right there. It hit me right there because um, I had realized at that moment that that I really wanted to help people too. Um, they started supporting me at Project Walk. That was huge. That was like, it was a family then and I felt like part of the family. Foundations like Be Perfect are just crucial, man, because they are the ones who help um, the, the, with the everyday things, you know, the independence and uh, restoring your own dignity, man. And you're, you know, they, they're, they're helping people and they're doing it for the right reasons. Physically, emotionally, mentally, it's made me better all around. I just think the idea of Be Perfect in them helping other people just changed my way of thinking that it could be a positive thing. I can still be me in a wheelchair. I know I'm making a difference in this and it's and I'm not, I don't even care about the gratification. It's not even about that. It's really all about just saying, wow, you know, we're making a difference in people's lives and I understand that now. I totally get that and I'm like, wow, did it really take me for to break my back to figure that out? I wouldn't be where I am if I hadn't had the support of the Be Perfect Foundation in my four years at Project Walk. I owe it all to them. You know, why is this happening to me? Why was I chosen? And I realized that I wasn't being punished for anything. I wasn't being punished and I wasn't given this injury because I had done anything wrong, but I was, I'm being used as a tool. I'm being used to find God's glory on earth. I think I know what I will always do and that's help other people. I think the foundation has not just become a part of my life, but it is my life now. And I'm okay with that. My name is Missy Christofferson. 
My name is Chris Seibel. My name is Mark Hall. My name is Jonathan Williams. My name is Brandon Rayburn. My name is Staffa Yellow. My name is Tom Hampton. And I want to thank Be Perfect. And I want to thank Be Perfect. And I want to thank Be Perfect. And I would like to say thank you to Be Perfect. And I want to say thank you to Be Perfect. And I want to thank Be Perfect. And I want to thank the Be Perfect Foundation. So I'm Hal Hargrave, and I'm the founder of Be Perfect. And I want to thank all of you.